Y'all, we have made it. Over to deer camp. So I'm with my brother and another friend, and we're gonna hunt in the morning, or probably the next couple days, unless we get something first thing in the morning. But this is an awesome area, beautiful wooded forest. We got here, we drove from Orange Beach, Alabama, about a four hour drive, so probably get some rest. Y'all, good morning, we are up and uh, it's almost 30 minutes before shooting light, so we're gonna go ahead and get to our hunting spot. My brother and my friend are heading a little bit further down, so they're taking the truck. I'm staying kind of close to camp. But I have my 20 gauge Savage shooting these Remington Accu tips. It's a 260 grain. So I know y'all want to see some hunting. Let's uh let's go get to our plot. I'm gonna go up to this food plot right on the edge of the pasture. About a 300 yard walk. And hopefully I can sneak in there. There was a deer on there earlier. Hopefully he'll come back. As I'm walking to my spot, I do wanna say thanks to the sponsors of the channel. And in this case, it's Mossy Oak and Frog Togs today. I'm wearing the Frog Togs boots. And obviously Mossy Oak camo. Bunch of clover and nice grass. I think I got him. There's two bucks. Let's go see. Let's go see. There were two bucks that just came out. Let's go see if we got him. I don't know if we did or not. I hope so. Oh. Oh. oh, if we did, I hope we hit him, man. Those two, two bucks. One was broadside, and one was facing me. Let's see. Hope we did. See how far that shot was. Y'all, this is my first deer ever. Never killed one. I haven't had a lot of chance to deer hunt growing up. Gotta approach him. Make sure he's down. Yep. Nice little six. Yeah, buddy. With the 20 gauge. Yo, that is awesome. Heck yeah, dude. So that was a 93 yard shot. And uh, there's two of these bucks, literally same size. I looked at their antlers. Oh man, what a pretty creek. And I shot the one that was broadside because, and broadside means its whole side, The bro, you know, it was turned towards me because that's the uh, 
that's the best target. You don't want to hit them if they're facing directly at you. That 20 gauge, I'm impressed by that. That dropped them like crazy. I was kind of disappointed I didn't get to bring my 308 out. <laughs> All right, we got to get you uh, out of this ravine. Wow, that is awesome. So I chose not to sit in the shoot house. I chose to sit down on the ground and utilize some good camo and shadowing techniques. <laughs> and there's no wind, which is good. So my scent's not being blown anywhere. So I was tucked in right here. And behind these branches, good camo. Let's go sit right back here again because my brother and friend are still hunting. So I don't want to mess them up. Whew. That is awesome. I'm so glad I can share my experience with you. My first deer ever, which would probably be surprising to a lot of y'all. I just don't get many opportunities to hunt. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, let's go pull this joker out. They came through there and was just munching on some grass and clover. This is where it was right there. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Let's go pull them out. Not too bad. He dropped pretty quickly. Just trying to bring them uphill. I tell you what, when you're feeling sick, this is a good way to uh, <laughs> forget about it for a little bit. You're heavy. At least he has horns. Something to grab onto. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That's steep. <laughs> Alright y'all, we are going to dress this deer. YouTube guidelines and stuff. Um, I don't want to get demonetized, so we're going to get a picture. Call it a day. Y'all, we are back at my house here in Orange Beach in the kitchen. And we're going to prepare fresh organic venison backstrap with a mint chutney sauce. We're gonna sear the back strap on the stove top and then finish it off in the oven. The searing locks in the juices, then we'll slice it and with our mint chutney sauce. First things first, let's season our venison back strap and get that cooking. So I have my cast iron skillet on about medium high heat. We're gonna throw a little bit of EVOO, which is extra virgin olive oil and some salted butter in there. Drizzle of EVOO. And you'll probably hear my dog in the background. Here's a tablespoon of butter, and that's what's gonna give it a nice brown color. We're gonna let this cast iron get hot because it's gonna be a quick sear. Let's season our deer real quick. Y'all, I'm doing a homemade dry rub on this venison back strap. So we have some coarse sea salt. And when you prepare your venison or any wild game, you wanna get all that silver skin or that and a lot of that fat off. Oh, this is lean protein, and that silver skin and fat will kind of give it a, will give it a little bit more gamier taste than some people may like. Have freshly cracked black pepper. And then I have my masala box with a bunch of spices. This is cumin powder. I'm gonna do a little bit on there. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff and we'll spread that out even. Just a hair of turmeric. And 
and we're going to rub this in. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side of the meat, and then our pan should be ready. Y'all, so now that we got our seasonings on both sides, I washed my hands. I want to make sure you don't cross contaminate. We're going to coat this in a little bit of EVOO, and then our pan's ready. It's going to give it a nice sear. We're going to put these in this cast iron with the brown butter and the olive oil and just let it sear. What that does, we're not fully cooking it right here. All we're doing is locking in the juices so when we put it in the oven to bake, the juices are locked in and it doesn't dry out. All right, let's flip it. See that? Nice sear. Formed a good crust on there. Woo -hoo -hoo. Smells good, I'll tell you that. That's a pretty piece of meat. Y'all know that we have a nice sear on both sides. I like to hold it on the ends, sear that in, and it will look like that, and then turn to this. Y'all, we have seared our back strap. It's time to throw the venison in the oven. But first, what I want to do before we throw it in the oven, a couple knobs of butter and two cloves of garlic. And if you want to add rosemary, you can as well. So we'll check back in five to 10 minutes. If you have a meat thermometer, you can use that too. We're looking for about a medium rare to medium. It all depends what you like. But the more you cook venison, since it's such a lean meat without a lot of marbling and fat, it gets tougher. So for our mint chutney, which is just a nice yogurt based sauce, have one cup of plain whole milk yogurt. You don't want to use vanilla or anything. It might turn out a little weird. So plain yogurt, make sure you get one that's kind of thick. That's why I did the whole milk. Have one cup of fresh mint leaves. Look at that, they smell so good. Half a cup of finely chopped cilantro. Two serrano chilies, finely chopped. A tablespoon of ginger and garlic paste. Half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of sugar. Half a teaspoon of cumin powder. And we're gonna throw this in our blender and let's throw this in our food processor and our sauce will be ready. All the ingredients aside from the yogurt right now. Now just as a binder, I'm going to do a small spoonful of yogurt. Not the whole thing. The lid to the food processor, plug it in, and grind that up. That's what you're looking for right there. That consistency smells great with these ingredients mixed together. Now it's time to add it to our yogurt. Look at that. Everything's minced together nicely. See why you add the yogurt in there as a binder, but you don't want to add all of it because then it becomes too watery. So mix this together. Y'all, so there's our mint chutney. I'm going to cover that up, put it in the fridge until our venison is done. I keep on wanting to say steak, but it's uh, venison, which is the first time we've actually done this on the channel, which is crazy. Usually we just do a bunch of fish, but it's fun to be able to experiment and branch out and eat some fresh organic food. Y'all, it's time to pull the venison out. It is ready to go. Man, that looks awesome. Let's set on our pot holder. Smell that, I say that every time, but it just smells great in here, cooking this fresh food with fresh ingredients from scratch. Can't wait to try that. So you always wanna let the meat rest. We're gonna remove it from the pan, and then put it on a plate, loosely cover it with some aluminum foil, and let it rest 10 to 15 minutes. Ho oh, ho, that's gonna be good, I'll tell you that right now. Heck yeah, let's cover this up, let it rest, and we'll come back and slice it up. See y'all, we've let this rest for 15 minutes. Wow, look at the juices. Here we go. Oh, that's a good medium right there, which is what pretty much everyone in the house likes. So I'm gonna slice this up. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll do some thicker slices here. This is my first deer I've ever harvested. I didn't have any opportunities to deer hunt growing up, so I think you're never too old to try something new. I love hunting. I duck hunt a lot and stuff, but just I haven't gone after deer. But here we go. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Bam. That flavor is good. If you like yours rare, you can pull it out earlier. See, I like that medium rare. That's the thicker side of the back strap. The thinner side got done a little bit more. Drizzle some of that 
mint chutney on there. Nice thick yogurt. It's gonna give it some good taste. He also, we brought our venison back strap. Mom's there, and Ono's with us. What's up, Ono? What you doing, buddy? <laughs> he, he loves this little bit chillier weather down here. But Mom's gonna give it a try. You ready? This sauce. Mm, okay. That chutney is good. Mm. What you think about it? <laughs> good flavors? I love mine. It. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give mine a try mm. too. Mm -mm -mm. I never had any opportunities to deer hunt growing up, and uh, so that's awesome. And feeling blessed. Thank you, Lord, for providing this awesome animal, organic, healthy meat. Let's give it a try. Mm. Great contrast. Mm. Unfinished chewing. There's no gaminess at all. Mm. That mint chutney complements that venison extremely well. There's no gaminess. It's kind of hard to describe what it tastes like, like what deer. It's not like steak, but it has a texture to like a New York strip. It has its own flavor, but it is wonderful. Not gamey. They were not fed any pills or hormones, and they came straight from the natural woods, from the wild, into our kitchen. So I'm glad that y'all are able to join me, and I can share this experience with each and every one of you. If you enjoyed this video, this is unlike any other video I've done, and it's all for educational purposes, trying to stay within the YouTube guidelines. But we harvested our own fresh meat, and none of it's going to go to waste. I'm going to process the rest of it into hamburgers and jerky. Y'all, so in addition to the deer backstrap that we made. I'm also processing my own deer for burgers and chili. I went out and bought this from Academy. It was like 120 bucks. And I trimmed up all the silver skin and fat from the venison. And then this is where it gets fun and everyone does things different. For my burgers, I'm using beef fat right here and you do an 80 to 20 mix if you can do more fat if you like or if you want it leaner but i like that 80 to 20. so i'm grinding it down and then i'll regrind it integrating my fat and then vacuum seal label it and freeze it and we'll have plenty of that deer to eat on all winter and spring so that's also i just wanted to show you pretty easy setup Pop the pieces in there I just wanted to show you all that that's also what I'm doing and then you can make jerky and stuff as well so there's a lot of stuff you can do with deer that's the awesome part about it, is none of it goes to waste the whole cape and the head with the antlers are in my freezer waiting to get dropped off at the taxidermist that's going to go on my wall since it's my first year it's not the biggest trophy buck in the world but the first one I think that one's special y'all go smash that subscribe button if you're not already if you want to see more videos like this go comment down below so we'll see you on the next Bama saltwater fishing video most importantly, and as always, I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.